Welcome to part two of the GED Math 2021 preparation course from ultimateged.com. In part one, we asked you to ask questions and suggest topics you want us to cover. So in this video, we will be looking at your questions. Okay, let's look at our first question. Question 40, what is the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the graph? The x-intercept is where the line meets the x-axis. Here, the line meets the x-axis at three. So the x-intercept is three. The y-intercept is where the graph meets the y-axis. Here, the line meets the y-axis at two. So the y-intercept is two. This is as easy as it gets. If you can locate where the graphs meet the axis, you can find your intercepts. If you are given the equation of a line and asked to find the intercepts, it requires a little more work. Let's look at it. Question 40B, what is the x-intercept and y-intercept of the line y equals 3x minus 6? What you need to know here is that at the y-intercept, the value of x is 0. So we can put 0 in place of x and find y. We have y equals 3 times 0 minus 6. This will give us negative 6 as our y-intercept. Now, at the x-intercept, the value of y is 0. So we will put 0 in place of y and solve for x. We have 0 equals 3x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides. The 6 will cancel out. 0 plus 6 is 6. We have 6 equals 3x. Next, we'll divide both sides by 3. The 3 will cancel out. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Therefore, the x-intercept is 2. Before we go to the next question, we want you to please like this video. This is the best way you can support this channel and encourage us to post more videos. We deeply appreciate it. Okay, let's go to the next question. Question 41. A right triangle has a base of 12 units and a vertical side measuring eight units. If a horizontal line measuring nine units is drawn, what is the area of the smaller triangle formed? In questions like this, it usually helps if you draw the figure. So here it is. We have the right triangle with base 12 units and side eight units. We have the horizontal line measuring nine units drawn. This is a question on similar triangles. We will post a video specifically on GED triangles, so watch out for it. The rule is, if you have similar triangles, then corresponding sides are proportional. Let's call the side of the smaller triangle X. So X, which is the side of the smaller triangle, over eight, which is the side of the bigger triangle, is equal to 9, which is the base of the smaller triangle, over 12, which is the base of the bigger triangle. Now, we solve for x. Multiply both sides by 8. This 8 will cancel out. 9 divided by 12 times 8 is 6. So we have the height of the smaller triangle being six units. But that's not what the question is asking. It's asking us to find the area. Area of a triangle is one half base times height, or simply put base times height over two. This formula will be given on the GED test, so don't worry about it. So the area of the smaller triangle is 6 times 9 over 2. Work it out. This will give us an area of 27 units squared. Question 42. 
question 42. The pie chart represents the number of balls of each color. What percentage of balls are blue? This is the first kind of pie chart question on the GED. You are given the actual values and asked to find percentages. Please, it's the same way you'll solve it if you're dealing with anything else. The percentage of blue balls will be the number of blue balls over the total number of balls times 100. So we have 62 over 200 times 100. After setting this up, the rest is your basic multiplication and division to get the answer. Here, the zeros will cancel out. 62 divided by 2 is 31. So 31% 31 of the balls are blue. You can be asked other questions here, but the ideal is the same. Example, if Michael takes out the red and yellow balls, what percentage of the balls has he taken? The only work here is that now you'll have to add the red and yellow balls. So we have 46 plus 38, which is 84. The percentage is found the same way, 84 over 200 times 100. You'll work it out to get 42%. Instead, being asked how much he's taken, you could have been asked the percentage that is left. We know he's taken 42% out of a total of 100%. So we can just subtract 100% minus 42%. This will give us 58. Question 43, how many balls are red? This is the second common kind of pie chart question. Here, you are given percentages and asked to find the number or value. To find the value of red balls, you will have 23 over 100, times 200, which is the total number of balls. 200 divided by 100 is 2. 2 times 23 is 46. So there are 46 red balls. The work here is being able to convert the percentages to the number of balls. Once you can do that, you should be able to solve all twists. Example. How many more red balls are there compared to yellow balls? We have already found the number of red balls, which is 46. We can find the number of yellow balls. That's 19 over 100 times 200. We do the math and get 38 yellow balls. The question is asking for the difference. So we will have the number of red balls minus number of yellow balls. 46 minus 38, which is eight. So there are eight more red balls than yellow balls. Question 44. If the company spent $54 on supplies, what is the total amount of money spent on all four items? This is really the same concept as the previous question, but this kind of question is so common that it needs its own question. We are gonna use proportion to solve it. We know that 27%, which represents supplies, is $54. We know that 100% will represent the total that we don't know. So we can have 27% is to 54. 100% is to x, that's the total we want to find. We will cross multiply. 100 times 54 is 5400. And 27 times x is 27x. We can now divide both sides by the 27 to get the x. The 27 will cancel out. 5400 
divided by 27 is 200. Therefore, the total is $200. Please, this kind is extremely important. Master the use of proportion. It's an amazing tool for GED math. Proportion could have been used to solve 42 and 43. There are still two more things we have to look at on pie charts, but we will do it in the subsequent videos. We want you to concentrate on mastering these first. Let's take an easy question just to relax your brains before we go to other questions requested by our subscribers. Question 45. If f of x equals negative x minus 2, find f of negative 3. Here, we are just going to replace the x with negative 3 and solve. Please be careful when working with negatives. We have negative, negative 3 minus 2. The negative, negative 3 will become positive 3. So we have 3 minus 2, which is simply 1. Okay, hope you are relaxed for the next question. Question 46. Find the perimeter of the figure. Finding the perimeter is finding the distance around the figure. So the hard work is knowing the measure of all the sides. We will solve it the long and general way first. Then we will solve it the easy but specific way. Now, we have been given these sides. This is six. This is two. This is four. This is five. And this is three. So we need to find the rest of the sides. That requires a little work. We know that the length here is nine. We know that his portion is two. So we can subtract two from nine to get seven for this point. We again know that this is nine. We know that this part is three. So we can subtract three from nine to get six here. Now for the final part, this part requires an extra work. We know that the full length here is nine. This is from considering here and here. We know this is six, so this place will be nine minus six, which is three. Now, we can add all the sides to get the perimeter. Six plus two plus four plus seven plus five, plus three, plus three, plus six. This will give us a perimeter of 36. The easy but specific way requires that you know that this shape is a step shape. If you have a step, then all the verticals will be the same as this vertical, and all the horizontals will be the same as this horizontal. So for step questions, you really just need these two values to find the perimeter. For this question, you've already been given the length of all the horizontal as nine. To find the length of all the vertical, we know that this place is five and this place is four. We add them to get the vertical to also be nine. Since they are both nine, it will have the perimeter of a square. The perimeter of a square is four times length. So we will have four times nine, which is 36. Realize that we had the same answer. If the two values were different, let's say nine and seven, then you will have the perimeter of a rectangle. Question 47. The graph below shows the number of tickets John sold for his magic show. What is the average number of tickets he sold per day? Average is the total sold over number of days. 
we will add all the tickets sold. We have 31 plus 18 plus 24 plus 37 plus 55 divided by the number of days, which is five. So we have 165 divided by five. This will give us 33 as the average. The first kind of common chart question is being asked to find the mean, which is the same as the average, the mode in median. We got a lot of questions about graphs and charts, so we will be posting more chart questions in future videos. Again, subscribe, turn on your notification, and watch all our videos to help you pass. Question 48. How many more tickets did he sell on his best day compared to his worst day? Here, we are still using the same chart. This is a simple difference question. His best ticket sales were 55 on Friday, and his worst sale was 18 on Tuesday. If you subtract the two, you will get 37 as the answer. The second common kind of chart questions are questions about range, difference, and sum. Again, we will look at more in subsequent videos. Question 49. How much money did John make on Wednesday if a ticket cost $5? We are using the same chart. John sold 24 tickets on Wednesday, so we will just multiply it by the price per ticket, which is $5. 24 times 5 is 120. So John made $120. The third common kind of chart question are the introduction of a value like price and being asked to further compute other things. More videos coming. Let's look at our final question. Question 50. The slope of a line is 2. Which of the lines will be parallel to it? A, y equals 3x plus 2. B, y equals 2x plus 3. C, y equals x plus 2. D, y equals x plus 3. Parallel lines have the same slopes. All the answers are in the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. That's mx plus b. In this form, the number with the x is the slope. The slope of the line is 2, so the answer is b, since b also has a slope of 2. We will end this video here. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. Help someone pass their GED. We will be posting more videos. Which topic do you want next? Triangles? Circles? Linear graphs and slopes? Pie charts? Our charts in general? Leave a comment. Have a great day. See you in the next video.